Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Gadget Hero Decky Guide. I am Sylph, and if you want to take a look at this deck more in detail, head to the end of the video, because that's where we will take a look at it there. So ladies and gentlemen, we have to talk about why you would pick Gadget in today's meta. And unfortunately, she isn't the most meta mid laner at all. In fact, she's probably the lowest uh, in terms of the tier ranking um, in, in this mid lane. So... You have to keep that in mind. She, unfortunately, is uh, does not very much synergize well. She isn't, unfortunately, um, a top meta pick. But what does she offer? She is a fantastic long-range artillery caster with her sticky mind. And that's why you pick her. If you have a good front line, like this Rampage, for example, we have a Richter and we have a Feng Mao, I can simply just kind of stay back, really, apply go these good sticky minds, and deal some good damage from afar. And that's exactly what this deck is also about. That's why we're going for Chaos Knowledge instead of Chaos Death like a lot of other builds. So go to the end of the video once again to kind of get the thinking of that, um, uh, of the deck um, at that point there. Now, I wasn't quite sure who would be in this mid lane. And I had to play it safe, especially with with uh, with the Fey on the map. She is on the map, and she can provide great harassment in this mid lane. So I had to ch I had to go for my advanced evolution first um, as our first card here. Why 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 do we get advanced evolution? Just because. Just because it is a great card that can help you with sustain ability. What happens is every time you level up, you gain 5% of your maximum health and your maximum mana uh, per second for 3 seconds. And obviously in this early game, you level up fairly quickly. And uh, that is important. And that will provide some good sustain. So I had to do that against uh, the possible Fey. And we got a Zinx. But if she harasses me, it is fine. So that is uh, that is why we went with that card first. Next is the very, very first ability you get. And I always recommend you get your mobility option as a mid lane caster. And uh, that is for Gadget, her speed gate. What happens is you put down a little speed gate and any minions or allies or yourself that walk through it uh, means that you uh, th they get a movement speed buff. And also there's a, there uh, isn't any damage on it anymore. It used to deal a little bit of damage, but not really anymore. The second ability you get is your sticky mine and that is her q ability what happens is you throw out a mine on the ground and if you know if it lands on a hero um it will jump to them just like that and deal some good damage after a little bit of a delay and that is her long range utility card or a long range utility um option here that we're that we that, that we're going for uh in in this early game and here is, unfortunately, I misplaced that, and that's going to be a wasted ability. So you have to land these, that, those sticky mines. You have to land those sticky mines, as that is the single most important thing about playing Gadget. But you can also combo the sticky mine with your right click, and that is Seek and Destroy. What happens is she throws out a drone that flies to a target location that is based around your your reticule. So what happens is wherever your reticule is pointing, that is generally speaking, and it's kind of buggy, um, that is where the the this little drone goes to. So uh, around stairs and and ledges and stuff, it's a bit tricky to be honest with you it's a bit tricky to uh nail down and exactly where it will land but eventually you will get used to it it deals a little bit of damage over time but more importantly it slows people quite aggressively 48 percent movement speed slow and when you combine that slow when you combine that slow with uh maybe a maybe a great Maybe a great um, um, get mine there that that you that you saw just there. Uh, it does actually work quite quite well, and you can keep people rooted uh, or not rooted, but definitely slowed in place quite nicely. And it is actually very very important to to do something like that. So there, as you can see there, I'm going to slow down this this zincs here. And as you see, I haven't gone back to base once. I've been getting some good um, some good. Some good harassment off, and I'm still nice and relatively healthy. Just whittling down this this Zinx here. It is a bit hard when it comes to uh, you know taking down a Zinx, but that is okay. 
In terms of upgrading your abilities, I will always suggest going for your Q, your poke, trying to deal as much damage and um, kind of fulfilling that role. At this point now with the lane pushed up, even though I think that Zinx is coming over there, we're gonna always have to gank as a mid laner. I haven't really done that so far, um, but I'm going, going to do just that. I'm gonna try to slow her down, just try to throw the, the mine. Does it land? It does. Do I get the kill? And yes, we do. Unfortunately though, the, the, um, the, oh, there's my ultimate Tesla dome. And I'm doing that because I want to maybe harass that, um, that um that fey there as i thought maybe this uh, richter would would have stayed but i didn't look at his man health and mana try to push down the tower a little bit but unfortunately uh, not able to do so now when when somebody is retreating like this it's going to work really well to slow them down get some good harassment just like that and kind of punish people so using that seek and destroy is really really important um and one thing you have to consider is that you can also click on, you can also re-trigger Seek and Destroy to stop in place wherever it is in, in, in the sky to stop and then do that. So especially if it's around weird terrain, you can just kind of throw it up into the air and manually stop it. Even though targeting it on the ground has gotten, um, has, has gotten a lot better. Another implication is that you can, um, another implication is that you can actually, um, put down your, 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 your seek and destroy, um, sorry, the, the other implication is that you could put down your sticky mine under, under yourself and actually use that, uh, it, cause that it will jump to you and then you can manually place your, your, your sticky mine. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to rotate there to the right lane as they definitely could have used my help. One of the best cards on a mid laner at the moment is is a blitz rush and you can see that in my third spot what it allows me to do is actually is it, it is to actually um bl dash in a certain direction and it, it should have actually probably used it there to get out of the um zinc's harassment there um but this is this provides a utility option uh to somebody that has absolutely no uh, a mobility option to somebody that has absolutely no mobility and that is really really important for somebody like for to somebody like um gadget here it really will end up saving my life um a ton and of course i could have used it there to get out of um to get out of the way of that harassment uh, but i didn't really do so some of the really crucial gems in this early game is healing towers you can see that when i'm standing on a tower you can see a little uh, regen going off uh, uh, on just about just by my health bar there which is really important and also auto health potion in, in agility because blitz rush is too too agility to to knowledge it's going to be really important uh that you get that to increase your to increase your sustainability in this mid lane because death is so uh, prevalent in, on, on mid lane decks and possess Spriken, you have to try to at least be somewhat sustainable um, against that. So you really kind of do need that auto health potion um, as well as that healing towers and something like advanced evolution or rejuvenator that is in this deck. And Gadget's ultimate, I did show it to you just once there, and I did actually just use it to get almost a double kill, um, but used it tremendously well, was, is Tesla Dome. Basically, it's a big dome of pulsating damage uh, that you place down on the battlefield. It's really quite simple, but it also pro it also does a micro slow, which, it, which, which is really important. The micro slow actually ends up doing quite a bit, um, and is really useful in a team fight. Combine that micro slow with something like um, with something like your seek and destroy. It can actually work really, really, really quite well. So you have to uh, you have to use it appropriately in the right place. And there is definitely the potential to um, to combine it with with um, with your other abilities as well. Seek and so there is uh, something a little weird about um, there is something a little bit weird with uh, with gadgets seek and destroy. Unfortunately, or with with her with her te with with her speed gate, it's a bit tricky. There is a bit of a 
animation delay uh, to uh, as to when it exactly um, deploys. So there is, there is a bit of a delay, and you have to be you have to be careful. You have, you have to be careful with that, just because. Um, you know, if, if you if you put it too far or too close to you, uh, you will actually not even get any benefit from it, and it will um, unfortunately just go to complete waste, really. So there is. I thought I saw that Grux try to be sneaky. That will definitely be a kill. Now, one card that is meant to be more of a transition card in this in in this deck, uh, not necessarily. Uh, and not necessarily something you keep, although in this scenario I am keeping because it is a good option, is Mataflow Acolyte. Simply just gives you 9 power, but whenever you buy Intellect with the card on, it increases your maximum mana and power by 0.5%, and that obviously does add uh, till for, for forever until you max out your your intellect now it's meant to just be a transition card but in this case we're actually doing quite well so i'm keeping it and getting glycerin dawn basically what glycerin dawn does is give me another hard hitting caster ability you fire a f you you fire out a a um a okay so i'm gonna put this uh tesla dome down in a bit of a um and a bit of a defensive position and i'm gonna try to throw this out here i'm gonna throw that out there i'm gonna throw out the fireball but unfortunately i miss and now we got an executioner's dash away out um unfortunately that didn't work too well there i'm gonna throw this oh there it is right on top of that fade is she dead yes she is thanks to the um thanks to the richter i'm gonna put out my 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 Tesla or my Stinky Mine, and that is one dead Shinbi. Yeah, nicely done. So we're getting some good some good Sticky Mines off, but unfortunately, it's not necessarily enough here to do to do much. Oh, and I missed that Sticky Mine. I thought she was gonna go to the left there, and unfortunately, I'm gonna have to be very very careful here, as uh, this get this. The sparrow here. I'm gonna throw it right there. Okay, good. So it there is it is tricky. It is tricky. Um, you know, landing those landing those sticky mines. Once you get good at it, gadget feels really nice. Now, one card I told myself I wouldn't use, but uh, ch chose to get it anyways because it doesn't really go with this long range artillery um, idea. Is Amplification Engineer. What happens is on ability cast, you, in an aura around you, you uh, deal 12% of the enemy's uh, total health as as damage, um, as, as 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 ability damage. So uh, with this with this Grux here, um, it's going to deal tremendous amounts of damage, but doesn't necessarily go along with the um, doesn't necessarily go along with the long range long range kind of theme that I think Gadget really excels at. Uh, so it's up to you whether you get it, especially on Gadget. I mean, we have Feng Mao, Rampage, and Richter, and it's working really well. So I'm simply, um, I simply chose to get that because I was able to get right up into the enemy's face. Let's take a look at this deck. And here is the deck, ladies and gentlemen. In the early game, it's kind of up to you what you decide. If you're up against another long-range mid laner, your font of experience absolutely wins out. Gain four experience every 10 seconds. Get your ultimate super fast. Gank really well. Do great things. However, if somebody's going to harass you a lot, start off with Advanced Evolution. Go back to base after first thousand gold. Get something like Tireless Reaper to try to help with your poke damage as Tireless Reaper. Your next ability costs... 35% less to cast every 10 seconds. Really, really works well for Gadget. Just keep those sticky mines going down range. And of course, Rejuvenator is there for 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 some for, for some regeneration. The first card to go in for is Blitz Rush. Dash forward a thousand units. I mean, you can dash in any direction. Absolutely mandatory on somebody like Gadget. Um, and it's just it's it's fantastic power. A little bit of attack speed goes a long way on a caster's basics as well. Manaflow Acolyte is a transition card. Don't actually really meant to build it up. It's not that strong in, in the current meta, but it does give you a lot of mana and power. Still, 
in this scenario, this was a bit of a different, a bit of an off match. Um, I was able to keep it, and if I'd done my math correctly, I should have actually been able to keep it and not go for Amplification Engineer, even though I could have gone in this game because we had three great frontline. Not usually, that's not going to happen. So, Mana Flow, is there just as a transition card? Glycerin Dawn, again, 21 power makes her abilities hit super hard, plus it's like another sticky mine, except it's a, it's a fireball. You have to be very, very accurate with the fireball. Uh, it's kind of silly that way, but I mean if you hit I mean it's a lot of damage 150 plus 15 per hero level and then 200 more over over four seconds just ridiculous right sapper is a is is a good card in this scenario uh with great frontline I could I was going for amplification engineer and riot sapper so that you remove 40 percent of current mana from nearby enemy heroes plus they had they, they have three casters to deal ability damage equal to that mana removed yeah i would just would have been a one big huge burst damage because the amplification engineer uh on ability cast deal 12 percent of nearby enemy heroes current health is ability damage i would have just used all of my abilities all at once everybody would have been just just blown up plus riot sapper that burst damage from that is phenomenal atomic soldier is what i was mostly going for at the beginning of the match because it's simply just long range artillery damage power max mana and ability damage is increased by 10 percent really simple increase your damage just like that stasis room is an option if there's tons of ganks you just need a stasis to get out of really then to mitigate damage stasis yourself for two two and a half seconds really smart option for gadget sleeper agent is something that you would also get in the very late game silence target enemy hero work really well for somebody like that fade to do to the enemy fade to deal all that combo um to deal her combo damage and the target takes 15 percent increased damage that combined with atomic soldier on that one target delete them from the game and also provide some some utility for your team again application engineer not the best on gadget it's just really strong right now so i chose to include this it is really good in this scenario in this match because we have three frontline and i was able to kind of just get in there and you know hit them with their basics and get close and make application engineer work so very strong card indeed auto health potion again to combat the really high amount of sustain in the mid lane because death and possessed riken is so prevalent healing towers to do the exact same thing and onslaught to reduce that ultimate so you can gank more and the rest of your abilities as well works really well with the little bit of attack speed on blitz rush actually goes a long way deadly mana increase your mana pool so more long range casting which is exactly what you're meant for mana fountain so you can basically just use all your abilities at, at all times not really but it is very strong and spell shield so you can mitigate long range poke and especially um crowd control that can get you out of position so that is very very important we don't have a tier tier 25 gem which is tough but it's all about that early game to be honest with you so auto health potion and healing towers is very very strong please let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of this gadget deck and guide please like this video if you like it just like it if you just like it share it with the community of course guys subscribe if you guys like this content especially if you found it useful please subscribe so i can do it for you in the future check the video description for links to my website merchandise store amazon affiliate link as well as all my social media here huge shout out to my patreon supporters Twitch subscribers and YouTube sponsors go out of the way to help me do what I love. I also started a little bit of a stream blog. Check it out on my website, sylphandparagon.com. Uh, the little stream blog is up there. Some really good insights in there as well. Till next time, like always, stay optimistic and positive.